Hi, my name is Leanne Markle. I'm from the Pigeon Letters Design Team. I'm a self-taught artist and illustrator and small business owner. One of my favorite go-to projects is painting my cute houseplants in Procreate using my favorite digital brushes, my trusty monoline ink brush from the Pigeon Letters, and using my favorite watercolor brushes I found from Max U. I love drawing from life. I think that is the best way to improve your drawing skills. Using photos I took as a reference is my second favorite option. If I can't draw from life, I'm always taking pictures of things that I want to draw. <laughs> today I'll be using a reference photo I took of one of my houseplants. Supplies that you need for today will be just an iPad, um, Apple Pencil, Procreate. I'm gonna be using the Monoline Ink Brush from the Pigeon Letters brush set and the Max U Watercolor brush set. I like to set my canvas to a large canvas size um, when I paint. I'll be using a 420 by 420 millimeter square at 300 dpi. If you don't plan to print your work or you don't have enough space to have a larger size, that's fine. I'm going to just be using a square canvas so you can set your square um, to any size for this tutorial. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and start with a sketching pencil. The 6B is one of my favorites and I'm going to use a black color. To bring in my reference photo, you wanna select the actions menu and turn on reference. Then select import and we'll import a photo from my photo library. I have an album with all my houseplant photos for easy access. I take lots of pictures for reference. <laughs> my camera is filled with tons of photos. Today I'm going to draw my calathea plant, or sometimes known as a prayer plant. I love the patterns on the leaves. I've been wanting to draw this plant for a while. You don't need to have a perfect reference photo, but I like to think about perspective and how I want to draw when I take my pictures. I'm also gonna turn on my drawing guide. You wanna select your actions menu and then select drawing guide, then select edit drawing guide. I like to make the grid size larger. I like to change the color to a lighter color and I like to have the background be a little transparent so it's not as distracting. Let's start sketching. Loosely sketch your houseplant. It doesn't have to be perfect in any way. I like to just get an idea of the shapes and elements that I'm gonna be putting on my page. My sketches aren't very detailed. My drawing style is very stylized, so my sketch is very loose. You also don't have to follow the reference exactly. I like to use the reference as a guide and I generally try to simplify my drawing. Like I'll decide if I'm gonna have all the leaves or some of the leaves and just kind of look at what are the things from my reference photo that I really want to keep and what are the things that um, don't make sense for me. I'm going to speed this up a little bit while I continue to sketch the leaves. I love adding cute features like eyes, legs, and hands. I like to keep it simple though. Again, um, I draw my eyes and legs very simplified. I do them in a few different ways. It usually just depends on the plant that I'm drawing. I like to think about what that little one is thinking or doing and then experiment to see which eye shape or legs work best for them. Usually it just depends on the plant. I get inspired about how or what they're thinking, what they're doing. That's really fun, it gets me really excited. a good time to look at your drawing and decide if it needs to be resized or repositioned. Um, you can use your drawing guide to help with centering and the perspective. I felt the leaves were tilting too much to the right so I used the selection tool to select the leaves and reposition them. I also made uh, my drawing a little bit larger and centered him on the page. Uh, your sketch might look a little messy right now as you make all these different adjustments but don't worry um, when we outline it will all look great your sketch is just a loose guide and it's okay if it doesn't look perfect and all right so now we're gonna go to the outline layer 
So I'm going to go ahead and speed up my outline process. Um, I'm just following my sketch and finalizing my drawing. Um, this is when I'm going to make some of the final decisions about what I'm going to keep and if there's anything I want to change. I also um, like to keep my um, the facial features and the hands and legs on a separate layer. I find that that's easiest um, when painting. You just want to have them on a separate layer so you can adjust those as needed. Um, also, this is the time I took to just add those extra details that make your drawing unique. I liked the way that the leaves on my plant are a little wavy around um, the outline of the leaves, so I wanted to add those in there. Um, yeah, and so I'll meet you at the end of, of outlining. of the leaves on a different layer that way um, it's just easier to paint um, with the watercolor brushes that way and then I'm also going to put the stems on a different color layer and um, I also through this process accidentally used uh, white with a little bit of pink in it and so I went through and had to re- um, color each of the elements um, white. It wasn't a big deal. Um, I just went back and fixed it. Um, I just prefer to use white because it gives a really good base for the watercolor. So now we're going to paint. I'm going to select my watercolor brushes from my brush library. I'm using the Max U brush pack. I have a few that I really like to work with. I like to keep my most frequently used brushes in their own folder. This way they're easier to access. This pack comes with a bunch of different brushes. The brushes all work similar to traditional watercolor in that they will interact with each other and give you different effects as you mix them. 
I didn't start with a color palette this time. Having a preset color palette is so helpful, but um, today I wanted to pull some colors from my reference photo. So I'm going to bring my reference photo back by selecting the Actions menu and select Reference, and this will bring up my last used reference photo. I really like the gold from the pot and I love the colors that are naturally in the leaves. So I'm going to pull some of the colors from the reference photos. Um, to do this, just hold your finger down on the photo and it will bring up the color picker. I'm going to add a new layer on top of the pot layer. Select that layer and then select clipping mask from the layer menu. I like to paint using a clipping mask with the color block layers that we created earlier. This really helps to maintain those clean lines and also it's just a lot easier to control the watercolor brushes this way. Um, it's just what I like to do and I found it, I found it really useful. Mixing different colors and using different brushes will all give you a different effect. I love that this pot is gold and it kind of looks um, worn. It, it just has like this, a lot of texture to it. So for me to build up that texture, I'm just going to start by experimenting with different colors and using different brushes. I'm going to do this all on the same layer. One thing to note with the watercolor brushes is that they'll reset once you pick up your pencil. So if you want to lay one color down as your base coat, don't pick up your pencil to, till you're done painting. Or if you do pick it up, you can use that as an effect and texture in your painting. There's really no right or wrong way. Um, I prefer to lay one color down and then build up my texture from there. So it's really just your preference. There are so many ways that you can build up texture and dimension in your painting when using watercolor brushes and Procreate. Um, a few of them that I like to use is experimenting with different types of brushes on the same layer, um, using the same color with different brushes or even the same brush will give you different effects. Um, experiment with um, blending new colors on there on the same layer or even on a separate layer. Um, both also give you a different result. I also will play with the layer opacity and I've really enjoyed using the smudge tool lately. That seems to be really fun to add in um, just to change and move um, the color and the texture around. And also don't forget to add shadows and highlights in your illustration if you want to. I think that also gives it a little bit more dimension and um, texture. So I'm gonna speed up my painting here and I'll meet you at the end. Thanks.
thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed painting a cute little house plant with me. I hope you found something that was inspiring for you or learned something new. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help and I'd love to see what you drew today. So please tag me on Instagram at Leanne Markle and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks.